Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a very spicy, one might even say janky, 5 color dragons deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the build around card in our deck is the Dragon Kami Reborn from Kamigawa, a 3 mana rare enchantment saga that on the first 2 chapters lets us gain 2 life and look at the top 3 cards of our library, exiling one of them face down with a hatch encounter on it and the rest goes on the bottom, then we want to make sure to exile creatures with those abilities, because on the final chapter it will transform into Dragon Kami's Egg, an 0-1 enchantment creature, saying that when the egg or a dragon we control dies, we may cast a creature spell from among cards we own in exile with hatch encounters on them without paying its mana cost, so it can be incredibly powerful if we can cast an expensive creature for free, and what better creature to cast than Tiamat, the 7 mana 7-7 seven seven legendary dragon god with flying, saying when Tiamat enters a battlefield, if we cast it, search our library for up to 5 dragon cards not named Tiamat with different names, reveal them and put them into our hand. So even though we may not be paying any mana for Tiamat, it still counts as casting it with the Dragon Kami Reborn, so we still get to search up those 5 dragons. So of course our deck is going to be filled with powerful dragons, not only to search up with Tiamat, but also to potentially hit with Dragon Kami Reborn, and also to synergize with a Dragon Kami's Egg, because if we lose a dragon while we control the egg, that's another way for us to potentially cast a card for free out of exile, so that's another interaction that can come up. Then we also want to make sure that our deck contains a ton of creatures, so increase our chances of finding one with a Dragon Kami Reborn, and in fact outside of our saga all the non-land cards in our deck are creatures. Now you might think that the creature curve of the deck is incredibly high, and while you're not wrong, we actually have some cheap interaction thanks to the channel ability in Kamigawa. So we've got our Twin Shot Sniper, 4 mana 2-3 with reach, that when it enters the battlefield it deals 2 damage to any target, but we can also use the channel ability for 1 in red by discarding the sniper, in which case we can deal 2 damage to any target. This is an ability, so it's not an actual spell we're casting, which means it's not counterable by your typical counter spells. It's a way for us to potentially destroy our own egg if the opponent doesn't cooperate, to still cast the card for free, and if we find it with Dragon Kami Reborn, it's still not the worst creature in the world. And then Colossal Sky Turtle, a 7 mana 6 5 enchantment creature turtle with flying and ward 2, has two different channel abilities, one for one and a blue, in which case we can return target creature to its owner's hand, giving us another cheap interactive spell, and then for two and a green we can discard it to return target card from our graveyard to our hand. So that can get back our fetch land, maybe various channel creatures, and can even get back our saga if it ended up in our graveyard. So a ton of synergy there, and if we have to cast a 6-5 flyer with ward 2 for free, it's also not the end of the world. And then we've got the Greater Tanuki, which can channel for 2 and a green, searching up a basic land to put on the battlefield tapped, so that helps us ramp and fix our mana. And then a 6-5 enchantment creature with trample, also not bad. And then moving up the curve we get to some of our dragons. We've got a full playset of Immerstrom Predator, a 3-3 flyer that when it becomes tapped gets to exile up to one target card from a graveyard and gets to put a plus one plus one counter on it. And then we can also sacrifice another creature at any time to give the Predator indestructible until end of turn and tap it. So that's yet another way for us to potentially sacrifice our own egg or maybe various dragons to get to cast those cards for free. Then at 5 mana we've got the full playset of Goldspan Dragon, which we could even ramp into on turn 4 thanks to the Greater Tanuki. And then Goldspan Dragon can help us ramp and fix our mana by generating a treasure token when it attacks or becomes a target of a spell or ability, and we can sacrifice treasures for 2 mana instead of just 1, so a great way to potentially hard cast Tiamat if we don't have our Dragon Kami reborn. And then besides 4 copies of Tiamat, we also have 4 copies of Old Nobone, a 7-7 seven seven legendary dragon with flying, saying whenever a creature we control deals combo damage to a player, we get to create that many treasure tokens, so it can also generate a ton of mana, very synergistic with Goldspan Dragon, as those treasures now make 2 mana instead of just 1. And then rounding out the deck, we can pretty much choose any dragons we like. I went with a new cycle of legendary dragons in Kamigawa, so we've got the Blazing Sky, a 4-4 flying trampler, that when it dies either makes 3 treasures, or can exile the top 2 cards of our library, and then until the end of our next turn we may play those cards. We've got the Midnight Sky, a 5-5 flyer with menace, that when it dies can make the opponent discard 2 and lose 2, or we can return a non-dragon creature card from any graveyard to the battlefield under our control at the cost of 2 life. 
And then the Boundless Sky, a 4-4 flyer with Death Touch, that when it dies can either search up three lands or generate an XX Green Spirit Creature token, where X is the number of lands we control. And then the mana base, of course, has to include four copies of Temple of the Dragon Queen to fix her mana, alongside four copies of Evolving Wilds with one of each basic land to fetch up, with either Evolving Wilds or Greater Tanuki, and then a few dual lands with Shipwreck Marsh, Haunted Ridge, Death Cab Glade, and Rockfall Vale, and some pathways. So we've got a blue-red pathway, which is important for the early interaction, which is either blue or red, as well as two of the red-green pathway and two of the blue-green pathway, since we do need green early for Dragon Kami Reborn and the Greater Tanuki. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play and can't turn down a hand with the Dragon Kami Reborn and the mana to cast it. So I'll keep. And then also have our Tanuki to potentially ramp. Facing a green aggro deck. Alright, so we do have a lot of tap lands in the deck, so won't always be able to channel Sky Turtle on turn two. But being on the play should make up for it. So get our Dragon Kami Reborn going. And sadly, no creature. Also, probably don't want to exile the Saga in case we shuffle and draw more cards later. So I'll get rid of a land. But we get another shot at finding a nice creature. Opponent on red green werewolves with a reasonable start. Tiamat we would have loved to exile, but old Nobone will do. Now one of the drawbacks of the channel ability is that it's not gonna count as casting a spell, so the opponent will get to transform their Stormseeker and other werewolves, but we can maybe bounce the slasher before they get any value from it. And then Evolving Wilds maybe fetches up a mountain here. Predator can help expedite the process of getting Gnawbone. So I don't mind playing Predator. And then... If they kill my Predator, I still get Gnawbone. If not, we can maybe make a Gnawbone at instant speed by sacking the Dragon Kami's Egg. Opponent does have a pretty large pack leader. And it is still Knight, so we do have to be a little careful. But we'll see how this goes. So our opponent does replay Stormseeker, which is a Storm Charge Slasher. And we'll see how they want to proceed. Probably pumps Partners and then Partners pumps something else. Alright, opponent does go for Blizzard Brawl, so that does let me cast Old Gnawbone for free, although I might as well sacrifice the egg since we only have the one dragon in uh, exile here. So I'll save the Predator. Opponent does now see the Gnawbone coming, and then I guess we'll exile an Evolving Wilds here to put a counter on it. So we'll see if they still have any good attacks. The partners could potentially chum block the old Gnawbone to deny a few treasures. And they could pump the pack leader to get past Gnawbone. That point is going to go all in on pack leader, so that hits us for 10. Can soak up partners. So we'll be at two. Hopefully there's no burn spell in our future. But we do get to untap with a lot of dragons, which can now make a lot of treasure. So that's promising. So how about... This name's white. Attack with both... That's 12 treasure. Second so play Tiamat, 10 mana left. So definitely getting a gold span. 
and then we'll get to various legendaries and a predator. I guess we only have four new dragons to find and then a knobbone we already have in hand. And then I can play Goldspan. That leaves 10 mana in treasure. So I could play the Midnight Sky, Blazing Sky. Cost me two treasure, can be sacrificed to make three treasure with Predator, so that can essentially make mana here. Although I might be fine just playing the Midnight Sky. Didn't think there's a way for me to necessarily kill the opponent here. Yeah, I guess we can sack the Blazing Sky, make three treasure, and then we'll have enough mana to play both other dragons, which might be better. Alright, so not a bad turn. Now we're still at two, so we could still be dead here. Ill-tempered loner. Okay, so they can give it haste, and if it's dealt damage, then we would die, but we can still sacrifice a dragon after blocking. Although I guess they would also... No, I guess they don't have the trample anymore from Stormseeker. So I think we're not necessarily dead to that, unless I'm missing an interaction. Yeah, we can chump and sacrifice to Predator. Ooh, Blizzard Brawl. All right, I will sacrifice to Predator in response. Make a token. Loner doesn't take any damage. And yeah, Predator can sack once again. No trample because it's day. So we might still be fine. Opponent sends the team. So we'll make some blocks. And then... I can sacrifice Midnight Sky. Make the opponent discard. And we should kill them on the way back. Wow, what a game. Incredibly close, needed every piece of the puzzle, but the Dragon Kami delivered on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, we've got our Dragon Kami reborn, plus potential interaction with our sniper. Could use some untapped lands, of course. And here, could fetch Mountain in case of a turn 2 Sniper, still useful for Goldspan. Could have gotten Swamp in case of Predator. So Black, keep up Sniper, although it looks like we're up against a Control deck, so unlikely to need the 2 damage, but could still come in handy with the Egg. That resolves. Find a Sky Turtle. Could have also gone for Tanuki into Goldspan as a potential line of play. But we're here for the Dragon Kami. Goldspan. And then... Probably gonna channel Tanuki. Opponent's still not doing anything. We'll get plane since we already have black. And then now I have a couple of options. I could sniper my own egg to get either Sky Turtle or Goldspan. If we want to get Goldspan, I might have to do it in my turn. Could also play Predator and then still keep up the channel ability, or we could just go for Goldspan from hand. 
Although if it gets countered, then we could get in trouble if they also have a bounce spell for my egg. So I think the safest play to guarantee getting value from our Saga is Predator. And then keep up the Sniper. Opponent's gonna Fading Hope. Let's channel. And hope that works. It does. And then now Sky Turtle versus Goldspan. Interesting question, actually. Goldspan can attack, but is easier to kill. A 5 toughness ward to Sky Turtle might actually be better. It's a little weaker against another bounce spell, but if they had one, we probably would have seen it in response. Maybe weaker against a potential burn down the house. That could be a concern. In which case, I could still see Goldspan being better. Alright, and Dragon's Fire revealing their own gold span. Alright, so that did not quite pan out, but at least now we've got a better idea what our opponent is up to. Play their own gold span. Attack, most likely. And then next turn I can play a Gnawbone maybe before attacking. Opponent actually stays back, and I can resolve a Tiamat. That seems powerful. Alternatively, I can go for my own gold span. If that attacks, get to make another treasure. Not enough to cast anything second main. Resolving Tiamat is probably too good to pass up on. And then can get some more dragons. Midnight Sky, Boundless Sky, seven dragons in hand, Predator could attack and basically trade for a gold span if I sank Tiamat, doesn't seem necessary. At least there's no Alrun's Epiphany to worry about in standard anymore. Opponent's got four cards in hand, we've got seven dragons. I know which side I would rather be on. Another gold span. Well, I guess her opponent's playing some dragons of their own. It's only fair. Land lets me play old Nobone before attacks. And then I could send Tiamat, so they would just trade for one gold span. Or I can gold span. Attack gold span Tiamat. They can double block Tiamat. And then I can play another Predator second main. That's reasonable. Sure. Opponent takes it. So our opponent can make quite a bit of mana here, if they're willing to attack. Can double block gold span, no need to sack anything. And a Shadow Skull. Alright, not bad here. I guess we'll grow Predator. Get rid of Fading Hope in case they're playing a Leer. Still left with a treasure. And then now... If I play Gold Span, that's 4 mana before attacks. Probably just Gnawbone attack. Get rid of a Dragon's Fire. Get five treasure. And then if I play Midnight Sky, I can make them discard two. And that should be game over. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty nice opening hand. 
we can fetch a green source, turn two, a red pathway to keep up sniper, turn three, a dragon cami reborn. Now black white does have a few ways of exiling our enchantments, maybe before we get the egg and can potentially destroy it. So that's a concern, vanishing verse, right to oblivion. Chef we could kill with a sniper. Although we could struggle to lose our egg here. Should have fetched the forest there, but I guess we're not gonna sniper the chef anyway. Wedding announcements. Okay. Is there a point on the black white enchantment sacrifice deck? Yeah, the problem is our opponent could just sacrifice whichever creature I try and block with the egg without ever killing it. So the hope is that they are gonna wait for me to get the egg before they try and kill it or exile it. As opposed to exiling the saga right now. Although at least we have double gold span as a nice backup plan. Deadly dispute to draw. Announcement's also gonna draw. Another Dragon Kami Reborn's nice. And a Sky Turtle. So I'll play this over Sniper, even though the Chef is gonna get plus one plus one next turn. Now sadly don't have a second mountain to search up with Evolving Wilds, but there's still the pathway. Vanishing Verse does indeed hit my uh, first saga. Okay, hopefully they don't have more of those. And then next turn I guess we can gold span at the very least. So Vanishing Verse, Ride to Oblivion are the types of cards we don't want to see. Another announcement. It's going to make a token. The other one's going to transform, make a token as well. And I can fetch maybe Swamp for double black. And a Tiamat seems nice. Alright. Let's see if Goldspan eats a Vanishing Verse or the uh, Dragon Kami does. Nothing end of turn, that's promising. But there's a right of oblivion, opponent being a bit of a party pooper. They can flash it back as well. Luckily we have a backup gold span. So now I don't have any qualms about casting the Sniper. And we're just gonna keep on playing Goldspan Dragons. I think that beats playing Gnawbone when we can't attack with it right away. And I can even double Goldspan. So yeah, when the opponent tries to mess up our Kami game plan, sometimes just playing Goldspan for days can work out. Now a Meat Hook Massacre for 4 would still be pretty effective. But then we can follow up with our Nobone. Only the Chef attacking. So no Meat Hook Massacre incoming. They are at 8. Alright, never mind. Meat Hook for 4 after all, so they missed out on some damage. Maybe because they valued getting an extra token.
Now the token's a 3 3, sadly, so it doesn't die to the sniper. Oh, let's hope Nobone gets there. I think we've faced enough removal for now that we should be allowed to attack. And restoration. Can eventually get back Chef. And the uh, life of Toshiro, not too threatening here. Alright, fun. We get to attack with Nobun. Make seven treasure, play Blazing Sky. Which can provide more value when it dies. And then do I want to play Sniper? Probably not necessary, because there's a Meatook for 7 next turn. Or even 6 if they can shrink down Nobone first. <laughs> They're going to shrink down Blazing Sky. That's fine. Don't really want to block with it since the damage from Blazing Sky plus Sniper could still get there. So we'll take three. Announcements makes a token. Untap. Attack. And our opponent gets to destroy Blazing Sky. And gain a life. And still die. Alright. So yeah, this can be a very difficult matchup with all that exile based removal dealing with our saga. But uh, yeah, sometimes you draw other powerful cards that can make up for it and get there in the end. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This is an easy mulligan. This one we can keep. I've got our Dragon Kami Reborn. And then probably hang on to Tanuki Goldspan, which could also be powerful turn 4 play, in case Dragon Kami Reborn doesn't work out. And uh, I'm sure we'll play Mountain, postpone our decisions here. Although I imagine this is going to be green. Could also now play this on blue for Sky Turtle, and then Tanuki, I guess, can't get double red since we only have the one basic Mountain, which I will need if we want a Goldspan. Opponent is green-white. How likely am I going to need channel on turn 2? I think I should lean towards uh, keeping double reds, potentially. So, a Naya deck, turn 2 Thalia. That delays my... Dragon Kami Reborn, but that does make it more likely that we can actually lose the egg and uh, cast whatever we find for free if our opponent has to be attacking on the ground. So Naya Humans can still channel Tanuki for three. And then Kami Reborn next turn, or maybe even Goldspan, Raidan, does not make that more expensive at least. Get my blue. Alright, no shortage of dragon camis. Find a predator. So we'll see if we can keep up with all the damage thanks to the life gain. They might have some exile based removal that gets around. My egg, I like maybe the uh, werewolf, so that's potentially a concern. Where finding the twin shot sniper would be nice. Partners, that's gonna increase the damage significantly. And they can stack it all on the flyer, which gets past my egg. Although we can bounce with Sky Turtle at least. Find a Tanuki. For now, probably still 
reborn, and then next turn I might be able to gold span plus Sky Turtle. Haven't found anything amazing yet, but the fact that we have two Sagas makes it more likely that one of them finds something juicy. And uh, Swamp is fine. Okay. Second attack with gold span, channel before blocks to bounce Raidan. Initiates could also destroy my enchantments here. Oof, that's a brutal combo. Initiate plus partners. And we're at six. And they can just keep doing that over and over. Did find a Tiamat at long last, but uh. Yeah, now if my plan is to Goldspan, Sky Turtle, Raidan, I still just lose to the partners. So the plan might be Dragon number two, keep up Sky Turtle, hope they put counters on Initiate, bounce Initiates, I still survive thanks to the life gain, and then hope to get somewhere next turn. Although I'm not too hopeful. They don't have to put more counters on initiates because uh, of training, so yeah, opponent's going for adversary, pump the team. Partners now puts three counters on there. So now I think we're just dead. Had I bounced partners before combats, would I have survived? I guess it would have been closer, but I think we're still dead either way. Alright, so yeah, some good early disruption, but mainly the partners having a big impact on the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, we've got our Dragon Kami reborn, so definitely keeping. And then probably fetch Mountain. This can be green, and then next turn we can decide on Temple. Probably going for black for our predator. Twin shot sniper also helps us potentially sacrifice our own egg. I think I'll actually reveal gold span to not give away our predator plus Kami reborn plan. In case your opponent wants to interfere, Tiamat is gonna be the pick. And then I wouldn't mind hitting my land drops so we can eventually cast whatever Tiamat finds. Well, <laughs> I want to draw the lands and not exile them, but uh, I guess Evolving Wilds to keep the planes in the deck. And then play another Kami Reborn. Find another Tiamat. And Twinshot Sniper should at least guarantee that we get our first Tiamat. Predator could also help. And here, I think I want to leave Boundless Sky in the deck to search up with Tiamat, so Tanuki can be exiled to play Predator. That can sacrifice the Dragon Kami's Egg at instant speed. Give us a nice 7-7 Tiamat, plus a couple Dragons in hand. Ren and 7. Should be manageable. Nobone, Midnight Sky, Goldspan, Boundless Sky, and Predator. Might have to discard to hand size next turn, but that's fine. And then Evolving Wilds can get exiled. Another Tiamat in hands. So... 
can attack with Predator, exiling my own Saga. Can send both face. And then uh, Twin Shot can finish off Ren. Seems fine. Could also play Blazing Sky to make treasure, but it's not too helpful. Could sack it to potentially play lands. But the thing just going face is okay here. And our opponent has seen enough, understandably. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a keepable hand with our Dragon Kami Reborn. Tanuki for a bit of ramp. And then hopefully we'll find a way to sacrifice the egg or the opponent cooperates. Alright, up against Mono Red Aggro. So. Probably going to need Twin Shot Sniper early. Although the plus one counter means we might not be able to kill their two drop. Lizard Blades luckily still dies here. And Monorat should not be able to interfere with our Dragon Kami Reborn. So there's hope. Find a Sky Turtle. Next turn, Predator can help us sacrifice the egg as well. Chandra can plus play another one drop. But they don't have one. Find Old Gnawbone. That's probably going to be the pick. Reveal Predator, play Predator. And then they might be able to kill my Predator here to prevent the sacrifice next turn. But then they still need to find a way to get past my egg without killing it, which is not easy. Maybe a flying creature could get there. So that's the sequence that can still win our opponent the game. Otherwise, I assume getting a Nobun in play next turn, followed by a Tiamat's gonna seal the deal. So, probably not worth it to block. Spikefield Hazard would have been able to finish off Predator, and another Saga here. Alright, so step one, attack. Can go after the opponent if we want to trigger Gnawbone. And then before damage, sacrifice. Get Gnawbone in play. Make for treasure. Play Tiamat. And that should be enough to close out the game next turn. Still at 15, 277 blockers, opponents at 16. So don't really see them getting out of this. And our opponent agrees, awesome. Alright, so we got to see our deck in action, and yeah, it's definitely powerful if it all lines up and we get to play our Dragon Kami Reborn, but overall not the most consistent deck as it does rely very heavily on our rare saga, and even when we draw it, sometimes the opponent can still destroy our enchantment or exile the token, bounce it, who knows, so there's still a lot of ways the opponent can interact even if the stars align. And then very aggressive strategies could also go underneath us, especially if we miss one of our two mana interactive channel creatures. But still probably the best home for the Dragon Kami Reborn that I've found, and should be a lot of fun in the regular play queue. But I would definitely not recommend this in ranked if your plan is to rank up. But maybe still fun to just play if you just reached a new level and uh, you don't necessarily get punished for losing a game or two. 
So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.